The Space Between by Kiki Thorpe. Chapter 4 Lainey trudged down the sidewalk in a haze of disappointment. She, Kate, Gabby, and Mia had searched all over Mia's backyard for the lost bag of fairy dust. They'd combed the flower bed, peeked under the patio furniture, and crawled on their knees over the grass. They would have gone on searching, too, if Mia's mother hadn't said that it was getting late and sent them home. Lainey's house was just three doors down from Mia's, along a street lined with tall, narrow homes and spindly trees. Lainey was so used to the path that she hardly noticed where her feet were taking her. A ferocious bark startled her out of her thoughts. Lainey jumped back as a black and white dog threw itself against the fence she was passing. Lainey saw this dog every time she walked to Mia's house. Although Lainey loved all animals, she'd been careful to steer clear of this one. The dog was always barking. But maybe now she didn't have to be afraid. After all, she'd learned so much from Fawn. She'd befriended all kinds of animals in Neverland. Maybe she could make friends with this dog, too. Someone with a real animal talent could, Lainey thought. And hadn't Fawn told her she had an animal talent? Lainey took a step toward the fence. There, there, she said soothingly. She didn't know how to speak dog, but she mimicked the tone Fawn used when she was talking to an upset animal. Don't be so grouchy. I'm your friend. The dog paused mid-bark. It stood with its nose against the fence, watching her. Good dog, Lainey said. At once, the dog began to bark again, louder than ever. Lainey turned and ran the rest of the way to her house. As soon as she saw her front door, a wave of homesickness washed over her. Lainey took the steps two at a time and burst through the front door, crying, I'm back! I'm back! I'm in here, Lainey! Her mother called. Lainey followed the sound of her voice to the kitchen. Her mother was standing with her back to the door, staring at the open cupboard. Tears sprang to Lainey's eyes. How long had it been since she'd seen her mother? Days? Weeks? Only now did Lainey realize how much she'd missed her parents while she was in Neverland. She hurried over to her mom and wrapped her arms around her waist. Hi, baby, her mom said distractedly. How does spaghetti sound for dinner? Spaghetti sounds good. Pushing her glasses up on her nose, Lainey straightened and turned to face her mother. So much had happened to her in Neverland. Lainey felt different. No, she was different. She was sure her mother would see it in her face. But at that moment, Mrs. Winters was busy searching the cupboard. She moved some cans around, muttering, I was sure we had tomato sauce. Lainey tugged her mother's sleeve. Mom? Yes, Lainey, her mother asked without looking down. Do you notice anything different about me? asked Lainey. At last, her mother turned. Oh, honey, she said with a sigh. When was the last time you combed your hair? You look like you've been living in the jungle. She ran her fingernails through Lainey's fine blonde locks. Go run a brush through it, then call your dad and ask him to pick up some dinner on the way home from work. It looks like we'll have to have takeout again. We're out of spaghetti sauce. Okay, Lainey mumbled, crestfallen. Her throat ached, but this time it wasn't from homesickness. Suddenly, she was painfully aware of everything she'd lost. The doe and the dairy mice and her friendship with Fawn, the fairies and the flamingos, the beauty of Neverland, and the specialness she'd felt when she was there. Was even that part gone? Now that she was home again, was she just plain old Lainey? Goodness, sweetie, don't look so upset. We can have spaghetti tomorrow night if you really want, her mother said, misunderstanding. Lainey sighed heavily and turned to leave. As she did, her gaze fell on something scuttling across the floor. It was a little gray mouse. Lainey stared. She'd never seen a mouse in her house before. A tiny jingling sound seemed to be coming from it. Looking closer, Lainey saw a bell hanging around its neck. It was one of the fairy's dairy mice. At that moment, Lainey's mother saw the mouse too. Ah! Get it out! She shrieked, stomping her foot. Don't hurt it! Lainey exclaimed. But her mother was striding over to the broom closet. She grabbed a broom and began to chase the mouse around the kitchen. Mom, stop! cried Lainey. I won't have mice in my house, her mother declared, swiping at it with the broom. The mouse dodged the bristles one last time and disappeared through a crack in the wall. You almost killed it, Lainey wailed. Mice are pests, her mother said. They're vermin that carry diseases. For all we know, there could be a whole nest of them living behind the walls. She shuddered. 
I think I have some mouse traps down in the basement. For heaven's sake, stay away from there, she added as Lainey kneeled down to peek into the crack. Who knows what kind of germs that thing has? Her mother stomped off toward the basement. As soon as she was gone, Lainey got down on her hands and knees to look into the hole. Ee, ee, she squeaked softly. Nothing happened, so she squeaked again. She could see a pair of beady black eyes gleaming inside the hole. It's okay, Lainey whispered. I'm your friend. The mouse wiggled its whiskers, but it wouldn't come closer. What was going on? Was it possible she'd lost her animal talent when she'd left Neverland? Then Lainey had a scarier thought. Maybe she'd never had any animal talent after all. Maybe Fawn had only said that to be nice. Lainey felt worse than ever, but she knew she didn't have time to mope. Her mother would be back with the mouse trap at any moment. Lainey had to find a way to keep the mouse safe. She went to the cupboard and found a plastic container with a lid. Then she took a block of cheese from the refrigerator and cut off a slice. She put the piece of cheese in front of the mouse hole. Then she stepped back and waited. A moment passed. Then a pink nose poked out of the hole, followed by a set of whiskers. Slowly, the mouse crept out, sniffing at the cheese. Slam! Lainey dropped the container over it. Carefully, she slid the plastic lid under the ledge, leaving a little opening for air. Now the mouse was trapped. I'm sorry, I'm sorry, Lainey whispered to the mouse as she hurried to her room. She could feel the little animal scrabbling against the side of the plastic container. She'd have to find a better place for the mouse, maybe a shoebox. But still, Lainey felt ashamed. She knew no self-respecting animal talent would ever trap a mouse like this. What would Fawn think if she saw Lainey now? Another, more important question burned in Lainey's mind. What was a mouse from Pixie Hollow doing here?